Just be glad for all you have that's in today. Hey everyone, Connie here, and welcome to my uh, blind reaction to um, Young Justice Outsiders episode six. So last time uh, we were just were kind of finishing off things, kind of closing out uh, storylines with uh, what we already had going. Not much of anything new and whatnot. Uh, I mean, it did progress the story and everything. It, it was good. And we saw that uh, Halo is like practicing with her powers and whatnot. Um, but, you know, it, it, like I, what I'm saying is like overall it didn't really feel like it had this massive uh, impact until it got to uh, Miss Martian and all and her brother. That was probably the most important thing. The entire thing with the new gods taking on these bugs. Um, and we saw that uh, McGann's mother, or brother, not mother, McGann's brother, uh, could not be swayed. He, he could not be swayed in his misdeeds and everything. Um, in fact, he saw her as the one, ha uh, being bad. That's definitely going to come back to play. Now, we still haven't gotten that direct connection to Dark Side yet. So I'm wondering when that's going to be brought in. We also still haven't seen Terra. We, uh, there, there's a lot that really is being built up here, and I'm just wondering if they can reasonably get to it all. Um, I guess we'll find out. I guess we'll find out. Um, otherwise, I know nothing about what's to come in this episode, so I'm excited to see what we got. Um, oh, excuse me. Ah! <laughs> knew that was coming. I knew that was coming. That's why, that's why I stopped for a second there. Um, ugh. Good thing I have napkins right over here. Jeez. <laughs> it sneezed right onto my arm. <laughs> Better than sneezing onto the computer, though, right? Um, but, yeah. So, I'm excited to see where this goes, because this season's been pretty good so far. I'm really liking Halo as a character. Um, she's probably my favorite of the new characters so far. Um, I don't mind Brion, but... Eh. <laughs> um, I'm just... I'm really interested to see exactly what they do going forward. So, yeah, let's just see where this goes. So when the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow the link to the reaction, and after you watch it, come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after it fades to black and then fades back in, everything from that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will contain spoilers to the episode. So that being said, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you at the reaction. And we are back, and we'll begin with spoilers in three... Two, one, now. So this was really good. This had a lot going on in it, and I feel like uh, it's really starting to go somewhere now. Not, the, not that the rest of this season so far has been bad, and not that it hasn't been going places, but... Excuse me. This is where it's really getting going. So our opening scene was uh, Black Spider, and who we can assume is Tara... Um, hunting after this uh, one dude and ending up killing him. Um, I, I mentioned how Black Spider is basically an evil Spider-Man, and I, I, I stand by that. Um, yeah, he was in one of the Suicide Squad movies. I don't remember which one it was, but in it he was definitely a lot more serious and a lot more uh, intense. And it's like he wasn't bad in that movie. It's just like it wasn't the Black Spider like I know more of. Um, I don't even know a lot about Black Spider, but the, mo I, the most I've seen of him, he, he's always been evil Spider-Man. So. Um, so it was interesting to see that as our cold open. Um, but then we got, uh, basically this episode focused a lot on who I think are supposed to be our outsiders, uh, based on what we saw going on at the end there. So we have Prince Brion. Halo, and Forager. Uh, kind of three uh, heroes in training, I guess you could refer to them as, who don't really fit in with the rest of the Young Justice team and are kind of working, <coughs> again, based on what we saw at the end, are going to kind of work outside of the main team. Um, so just like uh, the team did back in, at the beginning of Season 1, uh, our new outside... I'm going to call them the Outsiders for now. The Outsiders uh, 
betrayed orders and went off to do their own thing. Uh, Brion and them went over to Infinity Island to confront the League of Shadows uh, to find his sister. Uh, they get they get into a fight with um, Sensei and a couple others and end up losing and have to get rescued by the team. Um, and after that, we find out in a discussion with Ray Shao Ghoul that um, he's not the head of the League of Shadows anymore, nor is he um, even in the light. And as as was said, Ray Shao Ghoul is not a liar. And that's kind of been a thing throughout every incarnation that I've seen of him. He doesn't really lie. He he doesn't he'll hide, he'll hide information, but he doesn't lie about things because he he doesn't feel like he has a need to. He's very open and honest about his beliefs, about his feelings toward things, all of that. He he's never been one to be a liar to purposefully misdirect people like that. So the fact that he's no longer part of the Light or the League of Shadows, we can pretty much take that as fact here. But the question is, how and why? Um, we have no clue who's leading the League of Shadows now because uh, he, he didn't say. He, he refused to answer. He wasn't lying. He just refused to answer. Um, so that's definitely interesting. So Black Spider and Terra are part of it, but they're not there on Infinity Island because of the change in leadership. So that's interesting. That's very, very interesting. Um, I, I really like the stuff that we're, we're getting with these three uh, outsiders. Um, Brion is very much like Superboy was in, the, uh, in Season 1 especially. Um, he, he has that uh, anger issue to him, but he's trying to do the right thing, and he's trying to do good. Um, especially, he's just trying to rescue his sister, um, who he cares deeply about. But he just has a lot of anger, a lot of pent-up aggression because of what happened. And he doesn't know how to control his powers completely. He, he is basically Superboy. And usually I would be upset about that, kind of like rehashing a, a character to use again. But I think it works here as a parallel to Superboy, because this time Superboy himself, Connor, is getting to see it from an outside and be able to act as a mentor to Brion because of it. It's actually, I actually really appreciate it. Their powers are different enough to where they don't, aren't just like mere images of each other. And um, personality-wise, there's even some notable differences as well, despite the similarity in aggression. <laughs> Um, Halo, or as we now know, her original name is Gabrielle uh, Dow, but she prefers, she's choosing to go by, um, oh crap, what was it? The name has just escaped me. Um, I can look it up real quick. Yeah, I, I can't think of it for the life of me. Violet. That's it. Uh, so Halo is a uh, is a really interesting character, and probably my favorite of the Outsiders, if I'd have to pick one. Um, she's She shows that she has an insane level of knowledge about certain things. Um, and we know now that she used to work as a servant in the Markovian Palace. Which is how she, she clearly shows that she knows Brion. Like, she has known him from the past. Uh, she mentions that he was the one who first called her Violet. Now, we see also the reason why she's choosing to take on kind of a new identity. She's choosing to, she knows who she is now. She knows she's Gabriel Dow. But she's like, no, my name's Violet. And it's kind of like, it, it's, it, it's really nice to see, because... She's taking on this new identity. She's foregoing who she used to be. And I like that. I, I really appreciate that. Um, because I'll be honest. Because it connects to me as a trans person. I've thrown away my old identity. I still acknowledge it. But I've thrown it away. It's no longer who I am. And I've been forging a new one for myself. 
it, it doesn't matter like who I believed myself to be in the past. I'm not that person anymore. I'm Connie. That's who I am. And, and it's it, it's obviously a bit of a different situation, but the comparisons are there. And I mean, yes, yeah, yes. I I I know it's like, oh, do you have to relate everything to that? It's like I, it kind of just happens. It's not like something I necessarily uh, actively try to do. It's just like if if I see those comparisons, I, I, there's nothing wrong with calling them out and noting them, and it's important to me. So, um, but yeah, we see that when she was uh, first coming into Markovia and all, she was heavily discriminated against. Um, the person who gave her her uh, was it was it a passport or an ID, a new Markovian ID or something? Either way, she was very heavily discriminatory. Then there was that guy who threw a rock at her and stuff when she came in. And it's like, who knows how much worse it even was after that. All because she's Koraki. And that's disgusting. That's horrible. That kind of racism and, ugh, it's just, it pisses me off. The, and the problem is, the problem, and I hate to say it, is that it's real, though. We see that kind of thing in real life. Especially in our modern uh political climate with America. We see a lot of that shit, especially against Middle Eastern people, and it's disgusting. It's absolutely horrible. And it really upsets me whenever I see it. But it's also important to show because it's real, and even though it sucks that it's real, it's, it's something that people need to learn about, something that people need to know about. This poor girl is just was just trying to get by and all that horrible stuff happened to her and presumably a lot more than just what we saw there and now now she has very little memory of who she used to be and even though that's true she's choosing to forge her own path forward to become violet to become halo to become her own person She's not who she used to be, and she wants to make sure of that. And that's great. I like that. And then we have Forager, though. Forager, obviously, um, he was uh, kicked off of his home planet and is now just kind of with our group, with the team, basically because he has nowhere else to go. Um, but Brion and Halo accept him just completely. And Brion does have that connection with him, both having been kicked out of their homes and all. So there is that. Forger, though, at, in terms of personality, is just, he's adorable. He's an adorable little bean, and I love him. He's so, he, he's so innocent and friendly and nice and cute and everything. It's, it's awesome. Um, he has such a, just insanely likable personality and, and just every time he talks every time he it, he makes friends and everything is great it, it it just he's just so likable you just can't hate a dude like that um but yeah he, he's a really fun character as well and his power set is pretty interesting with his uh rolling around and shit and his, he seems to have a lot of power and defense with that um I know I made a joke about him and Sphere using a rollout and it being super effective, but, like, seriously, like, if, if you've ever played the Pokemon games, rollout can be a pretty devastating move, especially with Whitney's Mill Tank. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it's just, like, just imagine that. This big creature who has this very hard exoskeleton and stuff ramming into you at full speed, like, yeah, that's, that's going to be power. And that exoskeleton itself is going to be pretty defensive. So, yeah. Um, and they have the bio ship and all that they're kind of connecting to as well, especially Forager. Um, I guess you could consider that part of the Outsiders team. Um, so we see at the end, though, that uh, Dick seems to admire their uh, tenacity for all of this. And he's agreeing to kind of make them their own team. So that is going to be a thing going forward. 
Um, we see a little bit of Barbara Gordon as well, or Oracle, as she would be called, considering she is in the wheelchair at this point. Um, and it, it's fun to see her. She didn't play a huge role. We see that she's uh, romantically together with uh, Dick, which makes sense. They usually are. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's just like... I don't know how big she's going to be going forward, but she might end up being a bigger thing. Um, now, the big question right at this moment is who is leading the League of Shadows, and is that really Tara who's with them? Um, that's what we kind of need to figure out. That's kind of our big plot point at the moment. And I'm super excited to find out. Like, no joke, this season has been fantastic so far. It's been years since uh, the show was canceled with season two, but it, clearly the writers and everyone have, hell, gotten better. Because again, season two had a lot of issues, way too many issues. Um, but season three so far, Outsiders is proving to be fixing a lot of that. Um, and yeah, I'm really, really enjoying it. I'm still really curious as to how Darkseid's going to come into things. How are they going to bring him into the mix with all of this? Um, I know he's probably behind all of it in the end, but still, that's going to be interesting to see. Um, either way, tell me in the comments below what you thought of this episode of Young Justice Outsiders, and thank you so much for tuning in. For now, I'm Connie, and I'm signing off. See you all next time. And though you've come through many obstacles,